velocity. Velocity is very important. Uh, it's a metric we use in Agile and Scrum team to predict how much stories we can commit to in a given sprint. It is also commonly used for release planning um, to predict like how many sprints do we have to complete for us to able to deliver this value. But it is very, very important to know that velocity is not a performance evaluation tool. Increased velocity do not mean that the team is actually delivering value. So let me give you an example. A team can complete 200 story points in a given sprint or for like multiple sprints. But at the end, we are much more focused on if they are actually releasing potential shippable increments, PSI. At the end of the day, the outcome is the team delivering the value and not to focus on outputs, which is the outputs in this case is calculating all of this number, that's just numbers, right? But the main focus is not to increase velocity, try to drive velocity, but instead get your team to focus on delivering this value. But then again, we can use velocity because it also, when it's used appropriately, it can be a very beneficial tool for every Scrum team out there. And today I'm gonna to be discussing simple ways of interpreting your velocity chart. And I have like this demo or uh, demo velocity in front of me here. All right, so let's go to basics. Looking at our board, we're gonna go back to the Y axis. On the Y axis, we have numbers in story points. Uh, we see these numbers are in story points. And on the X axis, we have this, this sprint. Uh, we have for sprint one and sprint two, sprint three, sprint four and sprint five. Basically, this is like a whole quarter. Like depending on your environment, if you work in safe, sometimes that can be your one PI, five sprints in one PI, right? And if you work in an environment which is OKR, it can be like quarterly. Like in a quarter, you can have these multiple sprints. And then we can look at the velocity and see how many sprints do we need to actually predict we can complete this given value. And velocity is based on the effort, right? The effort, the complexity involved in actually doing this work. And we, we measure all of these by story points. And we know in story point, that's what the team will come together during sprint planning, during backlog refinements, and they'll estimate each user story, and that number will now be attached to the user story. Then at the end, we can now commit something. And sometimes you hear people say velocity is capacity, and this is true, right? The best capacity to see, to assess for velocity is basing the team true way of committing to work, which is our velocity. So let's talk about our sprints one. So it's the, the gray column, you see the gray line in sprints one, this particular team committed to uh, roughly at the bottom two to tell you, sprints one, they committed to 13. So this commitment means that at the beginning of the sprint, after we, we stated that during sprint planning, the PO prioritized the work. And after it's been prioritized, uh, the, the dev team estimated the work. At the beginning of that sprint planning, we all committed to that team story point for sprint one. So that's what the gray bar is saying. At the beginning, we stated that we're gonna be completing that team story points for sprint one. And hopefully by the end of the sprint, we'll complete our commitment. So in sprint one, this team committed to that team story points. And at the end, which is the green column, the green is what's been completed. The gray is commitment, committed, right? And the green, the green is 
completed. In the beginning, we stated that we'll complete starting story points. And at the end of the sprint, where we closed our sprint on the last of the sprint and the sprint was closed, this team also completed the exact amount they committed for, which is 13 commitment and they also completed 13, which is good, right? And sometimes you rarely see this, but in this case for sprint one, this actually happened. This team committed to 13 story points, which is the gray bar and the green bar, they completed that, they completed that team. And now let's look at sprint two. In sprint two, the team committed to um, 18 story points, right? And at the bottom here too, you can see it says 18 commitment. In the beginning of the sprint, uh, when we hit stats, after they already had their whole sprint planning, the team agreed and committed to complete 18 story points for the sprint. But at the end of the sprint, when the sprint was actually closed, the team completed only 10. So that's why if you notice, they had a spillover, right? That's another way we can interpret it. The team did not complete their commitments. They didn't meet their spring goal. So that was for sprint two. And in sprint three, the team committed to even more, right? They committed to 22 story points and they completed 14 for the sprint. In sprint four, the team committed to 24 and completed 24. And in sprint five, the team committed to 18 story points. So that's why we have the gray, right? They committed to 18, but at the end, they delivered zero. They delivered zero. So it's very important to know that there's a lot of factors that can affect the velocity. Velocity is not just based on, oh, you did, we did well last sprint and we did well, so then we should even do better this sprint because there's a lot of things that affect velocity. So like how many people it's in the team and also going back to available hours, your PTO, the vacation, onshore, offshore holidays. And also if we have new team member, sometimes I can affect it because some of the team members have to do knowledge transfer and that will take away time from doing the work and actually take the time to train this new person. If someone is leaving, go on, someone gets sick. So there's a lot of variance that can affect the velocity. So that's why it's very, very important not to use velocity as a way to measure a team performance. But instead, our main focus is to see if we are continually doing our releases and that releases mean that we are releasing valuable, shippable increments that's valuable to the business and the end user. So that's very, very important to know that. And sometimes you can also notice that another factor too you can see uh, in the beginning for a team is when you have a team that are newly new to Agile, right? or they've not done Scrum and they started doing Scrum. And sometimes you have no data, right? You have no data to go about this team. It's something that you experiment together as a team. And sometimes I know a company will use the, uh, their capacity, meaning their available hours to work. I know that's not the best practice, right? But people will do one story points one day, which is something that does not equal to, to, yes, then that means it takes everyone one day to complete an item. But sometimes it's used just to get a baseline and estimate, oh, how much can we commit to in a sprint, right? So that's another way too, you can see velocity being used. Then overall, our goal is to get an average velocity, to get our team average velocity. I know sometimes uh, Jira will automatically give you the team average velocity as they are completing the sprint. And to get the team average velocity, you basically will add all the completed, completed item, all the completed, completed uh, story. We add all the completed stories and we divide it by the number of the sprints. So in our case, right, we have five sprints in this case. We know in this fifth sprint, there was nothing that was completed. So we are adding the completed 
the completed user stories, we are adding this stories and we are dividing it by five. We are dividing by five because although the team did not complete anything in this sprint, right? But it still shows that at the beginning of the sprint, they had the confidence that they would get this work to done. But for some reason, something happened and there might be a lot of other factors that affected why this team was unable to complete anything in the sprint. So to get my true team average velocity, I am adding all of this completed number. Like basically I'm adding 13, 10, 14, 24. I'm adding all of this number to get the team's average velocity. And to add all of this number to get the team average velocity, I'll add 13 plus 10 plus 14 plus 24, and I divide it by five. So when I divide it by five, this team average velocity is 12. Going to my next sprint planning, I will have that in the back of my mind. And show this to the team and educate them on it. Like, hello team, let's talk about velocity. Let's talk about how we've been working. So let me show you all and interpret it to the team. Because sometimes you can just assume that your team know about this. So according to our data, according to how we have been doing our work, um, this, our current average velocity is 12. I know we do have uh, commitments, uh, people we are committing to more than sometimes what we can achieve, but it's very important for us to know that our average where we can actually start off as a team is 12. But in mid team, eventually you will see the team in the beginning might be, the velocity might be low, right? Because the team are not used to working together. They are not used to the environment. And later on, you now notice that the team velocity is increasing. We already went through the top mass model team formation and went through all the stages. And now they are the position where their velocity will now continue to start to increase. Then eventually to get to a plateau state where they now have their balance and in a performing stage where they will know that, okay, an average will always roughly complete 30 or 35 story points. Always. And velocity is something sometimes you hear the uh, leadership or uh, access crowd master. How come your team velocity is still low? How come your team velocity is that? Is that it's not something that's used on that sense? It's very important to know that if the team is given a good uh, foundational place for them to thrive and learn to be self organized and self managed, whereby you are giving them the trust and you believe in them, slowly your team will get to that high performing state pushing numbers to them or forcing them to increase their velocity. Uh, team can easily just tell you, oh, this is a story will take me eight, eight story points. They can give it more larger number where at the end, you thinking they are, oh, they increase their velocity. Yeah, the number it increased, but at the end, are we delivering value? So that's why it's very, very important for us all to know that it's something that we just see to predict so we can give est estimates to the customers or leadership on how long it can take us to complete the work. So please, if you find my context very valuable, please subscribe to Aisha Scrum platform. And my goal is to get to 1,000 subscribers by next year of August. Please uh, subscribe to my channel and see you again next time. Thank you.